Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to discuss the essay Dream Children by Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb belonged to the Romantic era. This particular discussion will be my first discussion on a literary topic of Romantic era. I will try to cover the UG and PG syllabus of all the central universities. And if you are aspiring for NET or if you are studying as a UG student or a PG student, I hope my lectures will help you to prepare better. So without further ado, let us begin. Before we delve into the essay, we should know a little bit about Charles Lamb. Charles Lamb started out as a poet. He even contributed a few pieces in the collection of Coleridge, which was titled Poems on Various Subjects. He even wrote a prose fiction named A Tale of Rosamond Grey and also another poetic tragedy titled John Goodwill. Charles Lamb collaborated with his sister Mary Lamb to bring out in 1807 the tales of Shakespeare. He also brought out uh, with his sister another book in 1809 titled Mrs. Leicester's School. Charles Lamb wrote a children's version of the adventures of Odysseus and that is called the adventures of Ulysses. He also published a critical work titled Specimens of English Dramatic Poet who lived about the time of Shakespeare. Here he took various scenes from different Elizabethan dramas and analyzed them. His, the essays uh, he published in the essays on Elia were originally written to be published in uh, the London magazine and later they were all collected and published as a book. His last essays of Elia were published in 1833. If we talk about uh, Charles Lamb's essays, we can see that these essays can be connected to Charles Lamb's biography as well. And these essays are also about Lamb's own experiences as well as his own memories. This particular essay, The Dream Children, was published in the collection Essays on Elia. So I'm not going to read the line by line here, but I will try to give a comprehensive understanding of each paragraph so that when you will read the essay, it will become helpful to understand it. So we see that in this essay, there are two children and of the father. The names of the, the father is James Elia and the children are John and Alice. James Elia is Charles Lamb himself. The children are eager to listen stories from their father about his own childhood. And that is how all this storytelling began. Uh, Elia tells us about his own grandmother, whose name was Mary Field. This grandmother used to live in a big house and this house belonged to a rich man and it did not belong to his grandmother. His grandmother lived there as a caretaker. The original owner of the house built a new fashion house elsewhere and lived there. Elia's grandmother would live here to take care of this house. It is with this house Lamb and his brother and sister had association with. And he said that this house has a very special place due to the ballad of the children of the wood. And what is the ballad of the children of the woods? This is a popular story of a boy and a girl who were orphans and who were living in this particular house with their cruel uncle. And one night the uncle left the boy and the girl in the forest and they lost their way and they died of hunger and exposure to the cold. The bird Robin Redbreast felt pity and tried to cover the bodies of two dead children with leaves. It was believed that the ghosts of these two children haunted this particular house. Let us move on to the next para. It is mentioned that this particular story of the ballad of the children of the wood is carved in a piece of wood and that was there in this particular house. And later on, the owner of the house took this particular wooden piece away and put some marble decorative piece. And 
that particular marble decorative piece made this place look very ugly. The owner perhaps did not understand the value of this story or written on this wooden piece. When, and when the speaker describes this, the daughter Alice puts a very disapproving look on her face. And here it is mentioned that Alice looks exactly like her mother. So these children are actually silent listeners. They don't speak, but these children do a lot of other things like reacting. And those reactions are described very vividly in this essay. It is as if you can see that the entire event takes place in front of your own eyes. Elia goes on to mention that his grandmother was considered as the owner of the house by the locals and she was loved and respected by all of them. And uh, she looked after this house on her own and uh, she continued to live there till her death. So after the death of the grandmother, this house went into a decay. Alia mentions that the owner took away everything valuable and uh, and this house was left untended and this untended house almost crumbled down due to nature taking over. So the many decorative pieces which the owner took from this house, those were uh, placed in the new house and there it looked very awkward and these decorations uh, looked exactly like taken from the tomb to a fashionable house. Here we see the abbey is mentioned. The abbey is a reference of the Westminster Abbey and some lady C is mentioned. It is a passing reference to any rich lady. So when Elia describes about the this particular thing, the owner taking away the valuable things from this house to his new house and there they looked awkward and kind of out of place and taken like something taken from the tombs. That description made John smile. He then continued to talk about his grandmother and uh, how she died and about also her funeral and he mentions that uh, people from all the places came to attend to her funeral because she was a very charitable woman and uh, she uh, knew a lot of verses from the bible and she was also very helpful so when this is mentioned that the grandmother knew a lot of pieces from bible by heart that time little alice spread her hands in wonder that how was it possible because she was someone who did not like to memorize anything by heart. Uh, Elia goes on to mention that uh, the grandmother was an amazing dancer. She was a tall and upright and gracious person and she was esteemed as the best dancer. When this particular thing is mentioned, little Alice did some movement with her toes and uh, this is something like uh, the children would do when they hear something interesting. She also made some dance like poses with her leg and her father gave a serious look at that time and what happens she she suddenly takes the foot back and started listening. Uh, Aria mentions that the grandmother got a very cruel disease and that was cancer and she uh, could not move anymore. That was irony. The best dancer could not move anymore due to cancer. So, but that disease uh, only bent her body but could not bend her spirit. Uh, Elia mentions that uh, the grandmother was very courageous and she used to sleep in that big house alone. And she mentioned that at night she had seen the spirits of those two children. You know those two children who haunted this house, those two children. And after listening to this story, Elia, like the young Elia, would often feel scared to sleep alone in the room. She, he would often ask the maids to sleep in his room at night. So he said that he did not see those children. But when he is trying to say that he does not believe in all that now, John expanded his eyebrows. As if he is trying to look courageous, he also wants to behave like his father. He also feels inspired to be as courageous as his father. So if we move on to the next para, we will see that 
Ilya from his childhood was a dreamer and he would spend hours in the galleries where there were 12 busts of the Caesar and busts are statues till the breast. So he would spend hours staring at the emperors of Rome and sometimes he would feel that he himself turned into a statue along with them. So and he would also roam around alone and he did not want a company as he was a dreamer and you, we know that the dreamers often you know, would imagine different things and scenarios and they would prefer to be left alone. So Elia also wanted to be left alone and he would roam around the place alone. And he would not only be inside the house, he would also be outside the house as well. And outside the house there were the gardens. So these gardens were beautifully described and uh, he said that uh, there were nectarine and peaches but he never bothered plucking any of the fruits. So he was more engrossed in enjoying the garden, the beauty of the garden. So the fruits never lured him. And also this could be another reason that these fruits were forbidden fruits. Because the grandmother was not the owner of the house, she was only a caretaker. So, uh, so Aria did not have the right to pluck any of the fruits. But that did not bother him. He uh, was happy just roaming around and enjoying the beauty of the garden. And he said that he would often walk among the yew trees and the far trees and he would go to the orange tree and he would sometimes lie down there uh, in the sun and he would feel that he was also ripening along with the oranges. So he could uh, associate himself as a part of the very nature he was enjoying. So he would bask in this orangery for a long time. And when his heart was filled with the beauty of the orangery, and uh, that time he would go to the bottom of the garden. And there was a pond. And this pond had many fishes. And uh, he uh, said that he would often look at the fishes. And there was a huge pike. Pike is a kind of fish. He said that there were all kinds of tiny fish darting to and fro. And the pike would look at him with contempt. He assessed that he took great pleasure in all, all those things around him. These are very simple things, but he would find pleasure in these simple things like nature, the gardens, the trees, the pond, the fish and the oranges. So he said that the sweet flavors of the fruits in those gardens are like common baits for children. Common baits because children would often get attracted to the fruits and would want to pluck them. But Elia was not like that. Elia would never pluck a food. And when he mentioned that, it is seen that little John was about to take a bunch of grapes from the plate. And the moment Elia said about a piece, not being greedy about the fruits, so John places the uh, grapes back in the plate. He also wants to be like his father. So here we see that the words of the father influence the child. He says that uh, the grandmother used to love all the children, but she had a very special place for uh, his brother John. In real life, Charles Lamb also had a brother named John. So uh, he uh, now in the next paragraph describes John as a very handsome man and uh, he was smart and lively and he was very different from Elia. Whereas Elia was a dreamer who would often like to be left alone, John was a high spirited person. He would often uh, ride the most mettlesome horse and he would often go hunting with the hunters and he did all this since when he was very little. So uh, John grew up to be a very handsome man and everybody loved him. So the grandmother also had a very special place for this young man John and uh, Elia mentions that in his childhood Elia was lame footed and John used to carry him around on his back. But uh, later in his life, ironically, John also lost his foot and became a lame footed. And Elia here regrets not being that much patient with his brother the way he was patient in Elia's childhood. So when his brother died, he says that uh, he missed him greatly. 
though his brother died just an hour ago alien felt that he was dead for years so like death creates this distance between the living and the dead immediately so at the beginning uh, alien thought that he was not affected by the death of his brother john but slowly it started haunting him and still he did not cry he could not let his tears out or show his emotions he then realizes that how much he loved him and the realization that when uh, we lose something or someone who is very valuable that was the time we understand the true value of that person or that particular thing so losing his brother was like losing a foot now elia understands how his brother would have felt when one of his uh, feet was cut off so listening to this particular part of the story the children john and alice they began to cry so we see that these children are very empathetic and uh, and they are listening to this story intently and they were and they are paying attention to the details so after that then in the next paragraph uh, elia mentions how he courted alice for 7 years alice is the wife here it is believed that this is the reference of anne simmons she was a woman who, with whom charles lamb fell in love with. so this alice uh, was very coy and when he mentions alice he said that he could see in the uh, little alice's eyes the eyes of uh, her mother so the two figures emerged and uh, elia was confused whether he was actually looking at uh, the eyes of the mother or the daughter so uh, we understand that the mother is perhaps dead here and after that in the next paragraph we come across some unexpected twist so as he was gazing and wondering so these two children faded away right in front of his eyes and they went in the distance and uh, they uh, did not speak to him and, and he felt that they were telling him that they were not his and alice's children rather alice's children called but from their father so they were only a dream and he now wakes up and he finds that he is a bachelor and uh, he uh, sees that uh, his uh, sister bridget is sitting next to him this can be a reference to his own sister madilyn so james elia also disappeared so james elia was actually a pseudonym a persona in this particular story here we see that the uh, word lethe is mentioned so lethe is the river in hades and uh, the children were eating at the bank of the river lethe so this is a prose form of dramatic monologue where there were two silent listeners and uh, one speaker james elia who was speaking he talks about his own childhood the experiences he had in his childhood and uh, the various emotions he felt if we see the prose style of charles lamb we uh, we see that uh, the essays of charles lamb are very subjective this uh, essays are very different from the essays of francis bacon in which she he kept um, himself away like he describes everything very objectively but charles lamb does something exactly opposite she he provides the various biographical details and his own emotions and experience in his essays so in order to understand his essays we need to know a little bit about charles lamb's own life so charles lamb was born on february 10th 1775 in a middle class family and he also ha- and he had a sister named mary and a brother named john so he was tutored at home up uh, to the age of 7 and then he was admitted to christ college this was a charity school and uh, his education was sponsored by the man whose in whose office charles lamb's father used to work So this was a, a school where gen- this was a school where the children of the gentle families used to go. So in that college Charles Lamb met Leigh Hunt and Coleridge and they became very good friends and and this friendship Charles Lamb kept till the end of his life. He used to uh, meet them occasionally and there were numerous letters exchanged also. So this particular school was a school where our teachers were very cruel on the students and these students were often ill treated 
So there were a lot of violence involved sometimes. Charles Lamb's house was quite nearby, so he would often visit his house. Lamb was treated with importance because the sponsor of his education was from that particular circle of people who used to manage the finances of the school. But he could not go study at the university. So from the age of 15, he started working and uh, he worked for a London merchant and then he worked at an office at the South Sea House. Then he joined as a clerk in the East India House and there he remained till his retirement. In 1796, a very tragic incident happened in Charles Lamb's life. His sister Mary Lamb would often get fits of madness and in one such fit of uh, madness, she stabbed her mother in heart and that is how the mother died. Mary was not charged for murder and uh, many people would help Charles Lamb to put his sister in the asylum. But Charles Lamb uh, could not agree to keep Mary permanently in the mental asylum. So he would uh, bring her out of the asylum and after the death of and half of their father, they would move out of that house and started fresh in a stay separate house. Charles Lamb's father also passed away due to his mental decline. Charles Lamb himself also spent a lot of time in the mental asylum and he was a bad alcoholic. But the responsibility of his sister helped him to overcome his alcohol abuse as well as his own insanity. Charles Sam could never get married due to his responsibility for his sister, though he fell in love a couple of times in his life. Once he fell in love with Anne Simons and later he fell in love with the actress Fanny Kelly. He proposed to her even but got rejected. Later on, he uh, along with his sister Mary adopted one of the girls, one orphan girl named Emma Isola. So he uh, maintained a very close relation with all his friends throughout his lifetime and they would often meet at his house and his house became the hub of literature and discussion. He was very upset when Coleridge passed away and within a very little amount of time he himself also passed away and the death of Charles Lamb was very tragic. While he was walking, uh, he fell on his face and scraped his face and that wound got infected and due to that he passed away. But uh, Mary would live for another 12 years. So if we look at the prose style of Charles Lamb, we see that this prose uh, style is intensely personal and subjective. There are very intimate revelations of his own experiences, his own memories and his own thoughts and opinions. He deliberately did not discuss on the dark topics of his life and uh, his tragedies of his life. And uh, his uh, essays are uh, vivid with emotions as well as very humorous as well as pathetic. So we see a lot of qualities are there mood wise. So there is a bittersweet tone. We also see a very creative way of presenting people in his essay and uh, we see that there are, is Latinism and, uh, and a lot of allusions, quotes and misquotes. Charles Lamb, to sum up in one sentence, we can say that he expressed the true spirit of romanticism. So uh, I hope my lecture will help you to understand this particular essay better. So I would suggest that you go through the essay line by line. This lecture will help you to understand it better when you go through the essay line by line. So if you like this video, give the video a big thumbs up and keep an eye on my channel for more literature related videos. Thank you. Bye bye.